A month ago, I deleted my SNS apps from my phone. I deleted Instagram and Twitter, the SNS I used to use most often. Around that time, there was some shockingly sad news in Japan. Every SNS feed was filled with people's thoughts on the incident. Some were angry, some were sad, some were scared, others laughed at them, then some got angry again. I saw people's reactions and felt gloomy. I was sleepy during the day and couldn't get anything done. I woke up, read people's laments on SNS, went back to sleep, checked SNS again, and felt painful. At some point, I realized that I was stuck in a cycle of mild depression. And in that cycle, SNS seemed to play no small role. So I decided to distance myself from SNS for a while. It has been over 30 days since I deleted Twitter and Instagram apps. Today, I will talk about what has happened to me in the past month. It took me a while to get used to not looking at SNS. This is because until then, when I picked up my phone, I almost automatically opened the SNS apps. It had become a habit, much like brushing my teeth or doing laundry. Without SNS apps, my phone seemed terribly boring. In place of the greatly reduced smartphone time, I started drawing and reading books. I was amazed how much more time I could create by not having my attention drawn to my phone. What I especially enjoyed was drawing pictures and mangas. Also, I did not eagerly check out other people's work. I often saw wonderful pictures and mangas that someone had drawn on SNS. I love drawing, but seeing great work on a daily basis made me feel like I was just making a copy of someone else's work. The same goes for my reactions to something or the way I think about it. What influential people say is instant rate spread on SNS. I often felt like I could relate and feel like the same way with them. I don't think that is a bad thing. However, sometimes I didn't know where my pure feelings were. We all live our lives influenced by something or someone. But when you are exposed to hundreds of people's thoughts every day, I think it is possible to become infected with someone else's ideology without having enough time to think and feel for yourself. What I was feeling while drawing was pure joy and freedom. I no longer felt like a copy of someone else. The number of followers is now very important in business. The more followers you have, the more important you are considered, which unfortunately is a standard today. Since I run a blog, I thought it was important to be influential on SNS, so I was rather strategic with my posts on Twitter and Instagram. I looked at analytics and thought about what kind of posts people were looking for. When it works, the number of followers goes quickly. It was as exciting as winning the slots, but what is the point in chasing numbers? Of course, I appreciate and value my followers, but they can easily stop following me if my posts are no longer useful. Is it really worth it if I just increase the number of followers? There are many things that have been talked about on SNS in the past, but no one even talks about them anymore. I think many people have friends that they only connect with on SNS. But in my experience, friends who really care about you will contact you through some means, even after you stop SNS. I think you should spend your time on those people. I have come to value more my family and friends whom I can stay in touch with even after I stop using SNS. 
I used to do a lot of research on Twitter. I searched the names of places I wanted to go, books I wanted to read, and things I wanted to buy, and checked what people thought of them. I rarely let the results limit my actions, but by checking reputations before actually visiting a place or reading a book, I think it is true that I had some bias. What drove me to such behavior was the desire not to fail. I don't want to be disappointed if I actually try it, so I check out the reputation beforehand. It was like insurance, in case my expectations were disappointed. But no matter how good the reputation is, when you are disappointed, you are disappointed. I now think that it's not necessarily a bad thing. It is because it gives me an opportunity to realize what kind of evaluation criteria I have. For example, when I stay at a hotel, some people may evaluate the cleanliness of a hotel based on the age of the building, while others may evaluate it based on how well it cleaned. What places do you perceive as clean and what places do not? Disappointed moves can tell you what your evaluation skill is. Since deleting SNS apps, I no longer do my research on Twitter. Instead of other people's thoughts, I now have a clearer picture of how I feel. After a month, I noticed that my terrible daytime sleepiness was gone and my motivation had returned. I don't think SNS was the only cause of my mild depression-like state. However, limiting the SNS was effective for me to get out of that state. I have not deleted accounts. I will continue to use it, but I probably won't download apps to my phone again. I hope this story helps someone. This channel is about simple, minimal, and sustainable living. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. It will encourage me to make the next video. See you soon.